So your jaw is all tensed up. You can't open your mouth wide enough to bite into a big apple. And in the dentist's chair, you have to ask for a break because you need to close your mouth now and then. If this is one of your problems, I'm going to give you three exercises that will minimize these problems over time. Well, it's two and a half exercises to be precise. Why? I'll tell you in a minute. Ina's with me again. Ina's going to do the exercises and I'll guide her through them. And just like Ina, you could do the exercise at home and feel what I'm talking about. What do you have to do if you can't open your mouth wide enough? You should open it. Very simple. That's how this exercise has been designed. Angle out the thumb of one hand to spread this side here open like a V. Then you put your chin into this V here. It should hold tight. And that allows you to pull your mouth open with the help of your hand. Lean back your head a bit to prevent saliva from running out of your mouth. Or do it over a sink, that's also an option, or in your bathtub. <laughs> well, and now open your mouth more and more, and that's what this is all about, to open your mouth. If you can't hold your head, it wants to move forward, then just take your other hand and put it on your forehead, and with this hand, stop your head from tilting forward. And with the other hand, keep on pulling your jaw downwards so it can yield. Well, your jaw muscles, that is. Just keep on doing this exercise. You at home too? Your jaw muscles don't seem to yield at first. But then you'll notice over time how your jaws open wider. Millimeter by millimeter at first. But even only a couple of millimeters can make a huge difference, have an immediate effect. Reduce your teeth grinding, the tensions in your face, the pain in your face, and so on. You'll feel liberated. Start slowly. Don't overstrain yourself. Stay under 10 on your personal pain scale, but increase the amount of time because we know it takes at least two or two and a half minutes of exercise to achieve the full effect in such an exercise. In our second exercise, the movements look a bit different. We have to use it on both sides. Now it's about moving your lower jaw sideways. And that involves other muscles and fascia. Sit up straight and take your right index finger and put it on the lower left ridge of your jaw. Great. And now, slightly open your mouth so you have enough room to move. And then you want to gently pull your jaw sideways to the right. It's a rather strange movement. The jaw might shake a bit, put up some resistance, be gentle, more than eight but under ten, and get used to it. It needs getting used to, because this movement, this going sideways, we rarely do it anymore. Almost never, actually. And if you stop using certain muscles or doing certain movements, then your muscles will forget these movements, and this results in this insecurity. But things will improve rather quickly. And the exercise is about moving your jaw more and more to the right, and here you can feel the extent of the stretch even less than with the simple opening of your mouth. But stay on it, because even only a few millimeters make a big difference for how it feels in your jaw. So, when you notice you're pulling your head too much to the right, you could use your left hand and put it on your nose so that your nose points forward and your head is stationary. That's a good way to monitor this exercise. Or you simply put your hand on your forehead to stabilize your head. But the trick with the nose is better because it shows you immediately if you're on course and you can correct it and keep pulling with your right hand to keep it in place. That's an additional exercise for you, for your body, to get better body awareness. And here, the same applies as always. Start slowly, but try for two, two and a half minutes, increasing your effort. And now, we're going to do the same on the other side. 
For this, you take your left index finger, put it on the lower ridge here, open your mouth slightly, and pull your jaw to the left. Great. And on the other side, you should also make sure not to go up to 10. Breathe nice and easy. You should be able to breathe in and out without tensing up. The rest of your body should be completely relaxed. If you notice that you're clenching your fists or cramping up your toes, then you're already a 10 on your personal pain scale because that means you're tensing up to be able to take the pain and that would be too much. So stay within these guardrails, more than eight, but under 10. Do that for two, two and a half minutes, not right off the bat. Get used to it first and you'll see how easier things become. Now, exercise number three or two and a half, I'll call it because it again is about opening your mouth. But we always try to make it as easy as possible for you, the user, so you're able to do the exercise in between your day while you're driving. Well, that'd be a bit difficult. To, your hands should be on the wheel. And that's why we've developed our jaw hero. Ina's holding it already. So just place it between your teeth. Well, and that's it. Pick the right size. If you don't have one, you just take a wine bottle cork for the time being and cut it to the perfect size so it fits. That should do it for now, serves the same purpose, and make sure, if you have it in, not to exceed 10, but go above 8. And the jaw hero, which is different than the cork, allows you to adjust the height so you can always add another 2 millimeters and make progress. And do it spread out over your day, not when you're eating, of course, uh, but while driving or working on your computer. I have it on my desk, so when I do some writing, every 15 minutes, I put it in, check the size, and do the exercise. It's great. So just use it. It's so easy. Do it a couple of times through the course of your day. Now, if you'd like some more exercises, then click here, and you'll find more videos, and clicking here gives you information on the Jaw Hero. Have fun with it. Bye-bye.